Eben Moss Backrack, who's going to be our Ben Grimm, the thing in the upcoming Fantastic Four, Pedro's co-star. Well, there's been a question that a lot of fans have been having recently, which is, how are they going to do thing in Fantastic Four? Will they go the Hulk route and do a CG like they did in the most recent Fantastic Four? Or could they go back to a physical, practical costume like the one Michael Chiklis wore in uh, those other terrible Fantastic Four movies? And listen, as bad as those Fantastic Four movies were, I thought Michael Chiklis was a good pick to play Ben Grimm, and I didn't think the costume was terrible. I thought the costume worked about as well as a costume could have for a character like him. Well, uh, Evan Moss was doing the talk show circuit, and I think he was on uh, Jimmy Kimmel the other night. Yeah. And he was asked about the costume, and he's put it to bed. Thing is going to be CG motion capture. And he even gives a reason why. All right, this comes from the folks over at Variety who wrote the following. Evan Moss Backrack took to Jimmy Kimmel Live to talk about his recent casting in Marvel's upcoming The Fantastic Four film, revealing that his character, Ben Grimm, a.k.a. The Thing, will be created using motion capture rather than a physical suit. Now, this is what he said. In the past, I think they've done a suit. Michael Chiklis wore a suit, and that apparently was really uncomfortable. And it's kind of, we're past that, Eben Moss said. It's a little kind of cosplay, kind of amateur, that kind of stuff now with the technology we have. Now, I know there are some people whose anal pucker hole is getting all tight Ooh. at the fact that he just said that. But I, I want us to understand the context in which he was saying. Because I've already seen some people blowing up saying, Evan Mouse Backrise saying practical effects is for kids and cosplayers. It's not what he said. He was talking about a very specific situation. He wasn't talking, he wasn't saying all costuming is bad. He wasn't saying all practical effects. He was specifically talking about a character like Ben Grimm, the thing, and what looks better today. And the reality is, as much as there are some people who mistakenly think practical is always better, no, it's fucking not. Not by a long shot. There are many occasions when, there are some occasions when practical is 100% better, and there's many occasions when CG, properly used CG, is absolutely better. For the Avengers films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, hey, listen, I got fond memories and I love me some Lou Frigno. But I did not want to see Lou Frigner or some dude in green body paint running around going, rawr. I mean, what they did was much better. And I think when you're going to do a character like The Thing, to make him that physically imposing, in a way nightmarish and terrifying physical <laughs> presence, you just can't do it. Again, big props to the people who did up Michael Chiklis because that worked way more than it should have worked. Like, that worked way more than a show. But you weren't going to capture the awesomeness of the thing with a practical costume. You, you just weren't. And so, personally, me, I think this is the right choice. You know what, Rob, will go one step further. I think it is easily the right choice for them to go motion capture with this. Again, that's going to come down to do they do it well or do they not do it well. And that we'll have to wait and see. But I think this is the right direction for them. What do you think about this? Well, I, I think it's the only way. I mean, look at the characters. We, after Thanos, all bets are off. You know, you made a purple guy, giant purple guy, completely believable in close-ups talking to human beings. A Colossus in the Deadpool movies, another example of how this works. I mean, technology has moved forward. And I'm sorry, but in the, in the MCU, when you have Thanos, you have Hulk, and maybe we'll get Colossus, I don't know, in Deadpool and Wolverine. You're already there. You know, you've already transitioned. It's been over. By the 10 way, he's years. in the trailer. So we know he's going to be there. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He's in the trailer. So we know so there so that you've got the those characters and we know that they're already established. I mean, we saw the Hulk in 2012 and it was convincing. You have to do Thanos. If, I mean Yeah, I mean if you had a, a thing as a practical effect standing next to the Hulk, it wouldn't work. It would yeah. be like, "What? Now this looks fine now, but now we're, we've created uh, or then, but we've created a, a character that, of course, they're going to use CG. I mean, I don't think that there's any question about that. Yeah. Especially in Marvel. Especially a character that's supposed to be like the thing, right? Yeah. I mean, like, there are going to be other combo characters that, you know what? Right costuming, that works perfectly fine. 
And I, I don't think Evan was saying when he says it's kind of cosplay, kind of amateurish, I think he was specifically talking about the thing situation when you're talking about a character that's supposed to be larger than life and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But there, there are still going to be, Rob, a lot of comic book and still are that are done today where they actually do them up in physical makeup uh, uh, absolutely 100 percent. but i would say that even an actor with the kind of motion capture they can get now your performance as an actor via motion capture is going to be far more convincing than your emotion or your acting in a prop suit where you're even the mouth movement might have to be radio controlled right so an actor is going to be allowed a lot more leeway to deliver a performance in a motion capture suit by the way, the Navi. Hey guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, The Perfect Gene. Guys, are you tired of the rough and rigid genes crushing your boys? Well, today's sponsor, The Perfect Gene, finally solved all of your denim difficulties. They make great looking, perfect fitting jeans that are as comfortable as sweatpants. The secret? A special denim fabric that is super soft and has the perfect amount of stretch so you can squat, do yoga, or just sit around all day without ever having to take them off. I'm going to admit I was a little bit skeptical because to me, jeans avoid been jeans. They're practical, but not always the most comfortable. But I'm telling you guys, it's not an exaggeration. Once I put on these jeans, the perfect jean redefined what jeans can be to me. They're the perfect fit. They stretch, they breathe. And again, they're just insanely comfortable. So guys, it's finally time to stop crushing your balls in uncomfortable jeans by going to theperfectgene.nyc slash campia15. Our listeners get 15% off your first order plus free shipping, free returns and free exchanges when you use code campia15 at checkout. Again, that's 15% off for new customers at theperfectgene.nyc slash campia15 and use the code campia15. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support the John Campia Show and tell them we sent you. Since, Prove that. Since Jonathan has this picture up, I want to mention another comment Eben Moss made that I thought was very interesting because Jimmy Kimmel brought this picture up and he said, okay, so can you confirm that this movie does take place in the sixties because of the picture that the Marvel, that Marvel released. And Evan Moss said something very interesting. He said, well, that picture definitely has a sixties theme. And I'm like, Kimmel straight up, like, can you confirm that this movie takes place in the, in the sixties? He says, well, the picture certainly has a sixties theme. I don't know what that means, Rob. <laughs> I mean, I, it, what does that mean? Is, is this, I, I don't know. What do you take from that when he says that? Is he saying that it doesn't take place in the 60s? I, I, I think he's saying it does. Like, he can't okay, confirm anything. that's one anything. way you can interpret it. Yeah, I think he can't confirm it. But if he says, well, the picture does. Okay. He's speaking about that art, so that doesn't break any NDAs or anything. He says there's a theme. So I I don't know. I, I, I That's well, making okay. me wonder if we're getting uh, the this The way you just bit. said it there, right. the, uh, it, it could, maybe their characters out of the 60s from the 60s they've existed in the 60s and they disappeared and now they show up in the present day who knows i mean you know <laughs> I, I, we, I, we need a new we Thank need you. a new i understood that reference meme yeah. we've got steve rogers captain america for a long time now uh, reed richards or maybe all of the fantastic four can say we understand that reference we need another character saying Everybody tells me I need to watch this Star Wars thing. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, out of time. I mean, and I look to me that would make the Fantastic Four. That's what the other Fantastic Four movies have been missing: the fact that we could begin in the 1960s, which is an era of the Marvel Cinematic Universe we really haven't seen, other than the flashbacks in like what Endgame, like going back to the military bases. You meet Howard Stark and all that. It's I uh, I uh, bring it on. All right, guys. Question is for you. What do you think about his comments saying that, for, number one, that thing is definitely going to be CGI? The right decision, the wrong decision, maybe the Michael Chiklis outfit worked better for you than for the others. Whatever you guys think, jump down into the comments section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campia Show Podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.